shameless self-promotion. I have a book out. Yeah! And, and it's five bucks. Come see me during the break if you want a copy. Here is what I define as an old favorite in my mind. <laughs> you were born three days after Columbine. CNN was blaring in the background as you slipped into the hands of the midwife and did not make a sound for the first 10 seconds of your life. In that time, you realized there is so much more color on earth than there was in your mother's room, womb, and only then did you cry. New York City turned to ash on America's lips on September 11, 2001, and as smoke and screams filled your TV screen, you were crushing berries in between your palms. When George Bush declared the war on terror, you discovered you could rip a strawberry into bits, and you had the seal seeds stuck under your nails for days. Your neighbor caught the swine flu right after you turned 10. Fear clogged your backyard's lungs and your father asked you to pray for her. You meekly replied, I don't know how much good it would do her. And you were sent to bed early that night. You grew bitter, you grew angry in a house that had become an amateur's altar. So you faked sick every Sunday mumbled during grace at dinner every night, your neighbor recovered, and you decided to stop talking to God altogether. The beginning of your adolescence struck, the beginning of your adolescence became stuck between the death of Osama bin Laden and the shooting in Aurora, Colorado. You weren't sure if you were an outspoken girl with no friends or if you were just talking to yourself the entire time. You had tried praying a few scarce times, but it only made you wonder if all the gods in the world had become deaf. All you wanted was for the scars on the deliberately hidden bits of your skin to fade because you had regretted putting them there. Newtown, Connecticut, and the rest of the United States, including Albuquerque, was flogged by the butt of Adam Lanza's rifle the day your eighth grade Christmas break started. You cried on the bus as the snowy radio recited the names of the 21st graders who had been gunned down. That night, you watched Bowling for Columbine three times in a row. Then you emailed everyone you knew and asked them to braid funeral pyres into their hair. And it was the summer before you started high school that you realized you weren't taking care of yourself. The American tragedies of the 20th and 21st century had overcome your devastated brain. Maybe it was selfless, but it was certainly not healthy. That was when you looked under your clothes and noted the scars had not faded. You looked up at your ceiling and remembered all of your unanswered prayers. So what? Am I just dirt under a God's fingernails, you asked. But you knew no one would know the answer.